for today's cup of coffee. I it's, need a drink. It's been an interesting day on a lot of a lot of uh, levels, and we had someone who was kind enough to come and install a ceiling fan, and yeah. that it's wonderful. How how that man was so patient with the mess of wiring that he found is remarkable. Because this house is older than us. Well, combined. It's just that when when you build something, if you're going to do a job, do it right or don't do it. And it's just there was one of them wasn't there bare wire on one part. Yeah, bald spots on the wire, which is kind of horrific. And um, so I I left kid with the gentleman while I took my mother someplace, and while I was gone. Gone? Gone. While I was gone, uh, there was he had missed a step on the ladder. Yes, he about flew off. He, he thought had. he could walk on air or something like that. And it's like, and wasn't there also an electric shock at one point? He almost got shocked. God love him. And uh, we have a lot of admiration he's, for this gentleman. He he's is a really just, cool guy. He, he is. And he has gone through some really interesting it's, stuff he has gone through some stuff in his life and still has one of the best most positive attitudes that you would ever want to meet there's not a bad bone in that man's body no i mean he's been shot how many times and different things like he's that he's been shot he's got a wrecking ball literally crush his foot uh, he's had heart surgery more than once, which is why we didn't want him lifting things above his head. Yeah. Um, he's just, he is an incredible human being. But And he finally got the, the mess. He was able to figure out all the things and got the, the fan installed. It wasn't a mess either of either her or I caused. No, these were the people that originally built the house. Yeah. And it's like, mm-hmm. So God love him. He's coming back Friday to help us install the flooring in the bathroom after, what, two years? Then that means I need to clean. That means that you get to help him pull a toilet. Good luck with that. I've done it I don't care about pulling the toilet. It's the <laughs> clean part. So, but anyhow, the reason we bring this up is because we're going to be discussing a mess of a worse kind. And Which is? we're going to be talking about, I call it Hotel Hell, but it's actually referred to as the Murder Castle. I'm, I'm vaguely familiar right. with it, but it's been a while since I heard anything of it. And I've, I've got a couple of different references that I'm going to put in the description box. The one from Wikipedia is con- confusing mm. in some ways. And... You know, the story is kind of hard to follow anyhow because the dude was just a scoundrel. He was either a psychopath, a sociopath. I was going to look at the difference between the two. What is the difference? They're both fucking insane. Well, it's not, not just insane. They're evil. Yeah. And so, anyhow, in 1861, Herman Webster Mudgett, I think he was born pissed off because he had the last name of Mudgett. You know, that I I don't blame him for being a bitter (laughs) bitter ass, bitter Betty. He was born in New Hampshire, and it's said that at an early age, he was fascinated with skeletons and soon became obsessed with death. Okay. And I will tell you what I am reading is this part is not from Wikipedia. It is from crimemuseum.org. Right. And it was less confusing. I've never heard of that website before. It's pretty cool. It so is. other people can explore it now. I uh, can explore it because I'm interested yeah, in that stuff. It may have been this interest that led him to pursue medicine. After mm-hmm. graduating high school at 16, Mudgett changed his name to Henry Howard Holmes. Uh, and later in life, he would be known as H.H. H. Holmes. And personally, for pronunciation's sake, I'm grateful. Yes. Uh, Holmes studied medicine at a small school in Vermont before being accepted into the University of Michigan Medical School. While enrolled in medical school, Holmes stole cadavers from the laboratory, burned or disfigured them, and then planted the bodies, making it look as if they had been killed in an accident. 
The scandal behind it was that Holmes would take out insurance policies on these people before planting the bodies and would collect money once the bodies were discovered. He was a calculated motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. He was smart. He was evil, but he was smart. In 1884, Holmes passed his medical exams, and in 1885, he moved to Chicago, where he got a job working at a pharmacy under the alias Dr. Henry H. Holmes. When the owner of the drugstore passed away, he left his wife to take over the responsibilities of the store. However, Holmes convinced the widow to let him buy the store. The widow soon went missing and was never seen again. Holmes claimed that she had moved to California, but this could never be verified. Why didn't he just say, I don't know where she is? Uh, because I think at that point that he needed a little more than that. That only works here in the 21st century. It's like, I don't know. I haven't seen her in like three weeks. Now that, like I said, that was a different time back then. After Holmes had become the owner of the drugstore, he purchased an empty lot across the street. And he designed and built a three-story hotel, which the neighborhood called the Castle. During its 1889 construction, Holmes hired and fired several construction crews so that no one would have a clear idea of what he was doing. He was designing a murder castle. After construction was complete in 1891, Holmes placed ads in newspapers offering jobs for young women and advertised the castle as a place for lodging. He also placed ads uh, presenting himself as a wealthy man looking for a wife. He was calculating. He was very calculating. Very. Possibly over so. All of Holmes' employees, hotel guests, fiancés, and wives were required to have life insurance policies. Holmes paid the premiums as long as they listed him as the beneficiary. Most of his fiancés and wives would suddenly disappear, as did many of his employees and guests. People in the neighborhood eventually reported that they saw many women enter the castle, but would never see them exit. It's like the Roach Motel. Yeah. They check in, but they don't check out. Spooky. In 1893, (laughs) Chicago is given the honor of hosting the World's Fair, a cultural and social event to celebrate the 400th anniversary of Columbus's discovery of America. The event was scheduled from May to October and attracted millions of people from all over the world. When Holmes heard of the World's Fair was coming to Chicago, he looked at it as an opportunity. He knew many visitors would be searching for lodging near the fair and believed many of them would be women whom he could easily seduce into staying at his hotel. After being lured into the hotel, many of these out-of-town visitors would never be seen again. And who would know? I mean, you, you would have never known that they were there. He probably picked people, you know, if these people were traveling alone, Mm -hmm. you know. The first floor of the castle had several stores. The two upper levels contained Holmes's office and over 100 rooms that were used as living quarters. Some of these rooms were soundproof and contained gas lines so that Holmes could asphyxiate his guest whenever he felt like it. That's fucked up. Yeah, throughout the building, there were trap doors, peepholes, stairways that led nowhere, and chutes that led into the basement. The basement was designed as Holmes' own lab. It had a dissecting table, stretching rack, and crematory. Sometimes he would send the bodies down the chute, dissect them, strip them of the flesh, and sell them as human skeleton models to medical schools. In other cases, he would choose to cremate or place the bodies in pits of acid. Who has the time to think of these sort of things? Uh, this was his job, and he took it seriously. Apparently. Yeah. Who has the energy to do that? Like, seriously. I well, he was, you know, able-bodied. He was just sick in mind and spirit. Calculated bastard. Absolutely. There are people like that today. Have you not been reading the news? 
Through it all, Holmes traveled throughout the U.S. committing insurance scams with his accomplice, Benjamin Pitzel. Not Pretzel, Pitzel. One of the, once the World's Fair had He's ended, Chicago's economy was in a slump. Therefore, Holmes abandoned the castle and focused on insurance scams, committing random murders along the way. During this time, Holmes stole horses from Texas, shipped them to St. Louis, and sold them, making a fortune. He was arrested for this swindle and sent to jail. While in jail, he concocted a new insurance scam with his cellmate, Marion Hedgepeth. Holmes said he would take out an insurance policy for $10,000 fake his own death, and then provide Hedgepeth with $500 in exchange for a lawyer who could help him if any problems arose. Once Holmes was released from jail on bail, he attempted his plan. However, the insurance company was suspicious and did not pay him. Holmes then decided to attempt a similar plan in Philadelphia. This time, he would have Pitzel fake his own death. However, during the scam, Holmes actually killed Pitzel and collected the money for himself. Well, now, what did he expect? What did Pitzel expect? Honestly. I mean, yeah, like... Uh, in 1894... <sighs> Marian, calculated bastard! In 1894, Marion Hedgepath, who was angry that he did not receive any money in the initial scam, told police about the scam Holmes had planned. The police tracked Holmes, finally catching up to him in Boston, where they arrested him and held him on an outstanding warrant for the Texas horse swindle. At the time of his arrest, Holmes appeared as if he was prepared to flee the country, and police became suspicious of him. Chicago police investigated Holmes Castle, where they discovered his strange and efficient methods for committing torturous murders. Many of the bodies they located were so badly dismembered and decomposed that it was hard for them to determine exactly how many bodies there really really were. Can you imagine? Uh, the police I investigation spread through Chicago, Indianapolis, and Toronto. While conducting their investigation in Toronto, police discovered the bodies of the Pitzel children who had gone missing sometime during Holmes's insurance fraud spree. Now, this I do know that he had uh, convinced Pitzel's wife. They had five children. Mm -hmm. She kept the baby and the oldest one and let uh, this dude this dude have the three middle children all right he out and out killed the little girls and then the little boy he had poisoned yeah i and i will say that the wikipedia went into other misdeeds and he got away with this shit like for from the time he was 11 it was suspected that he started killing people 11 that's yeah. So, anyhow. Shows for, ment thank God for modern mental health. Stuff. Well, sort of, kind of. It's like, I don't know. Because back then, like, it, it was worse. At least now, people pay attention to how a child acts for the most part. For the most part. Uh, anyhow, linking homes Proper to their parents. murders, police arrested him and he was convicted of their murders. Uh, he also confessed to 28 other murders. However, through investigations and missing persons reports, it is believed that Holmes is responsible for up to 200 murders. And now this is where it became uh, interesting. There was some conflict as far as what is true, what is not true between the wiki report and some of the other reports. Some of them said that uh, Holmes lied about that he killed certain people and mm. yet they were alive. So was he trying to make himself seem more of a murderer because that this newspaper had paid him to have his story? Um, but the, the interesting part... I mean, that's what it sounds like. That uh, the interesting part was that uh let's see let me go down here to the thing they had hanged him uh -huh. and it didn't his neck didn't break and so he actually it took him there it is um uh, 
said he instead strangled to death slowly, twitching for over 15 minutes before being pronounced dead 20 minutes after the trap had been sprung. Yeah, that sounds like karma. That's what you get for doing all that oh, similar shit to other people. Right. And then it was interesting that Hedgepath, who was this silly that helped, you know, this one scheme and stuff, he yeah. had actually been pardoned for informing on Holmes. And, but he was shot and killed in 1909 by a police officer during a holdup at a Chicago saloon. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. And then there was, uh, in 1914, the death of Patrick Quinlan, who was a former caretaker of the castle. And um, he said, it said that he committed suicide by taking strychnine and that his body was found in his bedroom with a note that read, I couldn't sleep. And that Good. his surviving relatives claimed he had been haunted for several months and was suffering from hallucinations. And because as far as the things that he knew in the castle. This one, the, the wiki report sort of questioned some of the things that were found in the castle. Yeah. And some of the things that had supposedly been done in the castle. Okay, if dude had been part of that or even witnessed that to the point that it drove him to suicide, I would mm-hmm. say that a lot of the atrocities that was reported were true. Yeah. You know, I mean, to just have shoots in these rooms to slide the bodies down. Like, it takes a absolutely demented person to think of something like that. Yeah. Or, uh, most of all, actually act that out. Yeah. And it was interesting. Like that is so fucked up. Because Holmes was actually afraid that somebody would uh, desecrate his body. For real. For real. Excuse yes, me. Yes. And so it was one of his last wishes that his casket and coffin, whatever you want to call it, was uh, enclosed in cement. And they actually allowed this to happen. No. You know what they d- should have done? They should have hung that casket up like a pinata. Well, yeah, that would have been all right. That would have been all right. That could have been interesting. But it said in 1907, amid allegations that Holmes had, in fact, escaped execution, the body was exhumed. By who? Uh, that was by Janet Monge of the University of Pennsylvania Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology. And because that his coffin was in the cement, the body was found to not have decomposed naturally. That's... So, did his, it like become like a mummy of sorts or like one of those pickled jar, pickle jars? I don't things? know that it was either because you got to think about it. It's the oxidative process of the oxygen in the air, of course, yeah. that causes the decomposition. So, if it's encased in cement, the air can't get to it. So, I, I don't know. I guess it's like one of our modern loaves of bread. It just doesn't moan forever. Anyhow. So, did he come out looking like a fresh, freshly slept... I don't know. <laughs> his, it says his clothes were almost perfectly preserved and that his mustache was found to be intact. It says the body was positively identified by his teeth as being that of Holmes. It says he was then reburied. I think that was a I, little too good for... But seriously, he, he should have been strung up like a pinata and everybody handed sticks and just take a whack at him. He was a trigamist. And then burn his ass. A trigamist. You've heard of a bigamist. I've heard of a bigamist, yes. This is a trigamist. He had three wives. Oh. He would just sort of abandon them, not get divorced, get married again. And that that last one, That's... that she had no clue. But, you know, apparently he was not around these people for long periods of time. And I'm sure the excuse, oh, well, I've got to be away on business and da 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 yeah. And he had children. And it makes you wonder when these people found out about him mm-hmm. and what he had done, and especially the children, what did that do to them? 
fuck them up. There were re- reports. Uh, there was one article that I will include that said that his father was abusive, mm-hmm. stern, abusive, and that they were saying that could have contributed to this type of behavior. Mm-hmm. I think this is a little more than this. You know, are sociopaths or psychopaths born that way or do they develop that way? You know, I've actually heard theories that it about both of them. Mm-hmm. But most of them say, like some of them say that um, it is somehow learned behavior. But then I've also, you know, right. heard people say that, whatever. But it's interesting. But, yeah. It was like a game yesterday. Like he, the fact that he was that demented and that calculated, like that's right. smart. Dude, that's fucking scary. Oh, yeah. that's But that is typical of people who are sociopathic. They are usually very good looking and, and does have pictures. And, I mean, mm-hmm. he wasn't a bad looking man at all. He couldn't have been bad looking and been the womanizer that he was. Yeah. Uh, they usually have higher than average intelligence. And, but with this, these people do not have the ability to feel empathy. Mm-hmm. Re- remorse, regret, none of that. They don't. They do not experience emotions like regular people do. Right? I. No. I mean, it is a matter of them not viewing other people as people to a degree. It's um, sort of like seeing them as tools for them to get whatever it is that they want. Yeah. Now, with the sociopath that I met, and I didn't get a chance to sit down and talk to him thoroughly, Mm -hmm. but same thing. It was a good-looking guy, bludgeoned to death, I think, three people, Um, intelligent. It was interesting because any time if I was walking, working, booking, and he'd... It's like he'd wave and it's like, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm fine, Mr. So-and-so. How are you today? This is, you know, one of the reasons when I walk behind somebody that I will say, I'm walking behind you because you never know. You don't want to spook some people. No, especially like if they have PTSD or something. Right. Or if they're a potential sociopath. That too. And these are people that can be very disarming. I mean, honestly, and that's part of why they do what they do and are able to do what they do. Mm -hmm. And um, it can be to the point they're very calculating and it's not a matter of they they'll take time. Their, Their schemes take time. That's okay. And one of the ways they draw people in is get them to lower their guard, to begin to trust them, to sit there and go, eh, well, maybe they were not that bad. Maybe that wasn't really what happened. Mm-hmm. And that was sort of what happened with with Dude. And he was taken down to visitation. They were supposed to be in full restraints, which meant, leg, you know, you had the shackles on their legs. You had the waist belt on. You had the handcuffs that go through the, the waist belt and stuff so they don't have much movement as far as arms and stuff yeah okay the shift that took him down did not follow protocol dude had gotten a pencil had hidden it on him uh i don't know who it was that was down there to visit him anyhow but there was somebody else that was in visitation um and that he hated and when he walked by him he shanked him the intention was to run the pencil through the guy's ear which would have killed him he missed and i think he hit he didn't hit the carotid Mm -hmm. but it was somewhere through there that whole thing could have been avoided if somebody had followed policy and procedure yeah pretty much and people are going to go, oh, my God, she went correction officer mode. She really was one of those. I mean, you did it for how many years? Over three. It was about three and a half. There you go. Um, but it's like you don't. And, and what's even crazier, you can't. It's not like there's any bells or whistles or anything like that that says, hey, I'm a psychopath. No. 
for the most part, they they act. They really do act just like everyday people. Oh, they act, you know, very engaging, very nice, very charming. Mm-hmm. So it's it's scary. I guess it's one of those. If somebody seems too good to be true, they usually are. Yeah. And um, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> what else can you say on that? It's just like hotel yep. hell. Yep. Hotel, hotel of a thousand corpses. Yeah, something like that. Like seriously, that 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 shit was fucked up. This is why I don't understand why there aren't more movies or whatever attributed to this man as a poor as opposed to poor little Ed Gain, who he truly was piteous. Yeah. What he did was horrible, but how is this not more horrible? That's that's had, on a completely different level. Yeah, he had acid pits and different things like that. He had a whole setup. You know, he had a production line going on this shit. Yep. So, I don't know. So, if you're an aspiring film producer out there, you could do this on Hotel Hell. Yeah. The Murder Castle. Loves it. No. Anyhow, so if you've had experiences with supernatural, paranormal, encounters with UFOs, aliens, cryptids, hopefully to God you have not encountered any kind of mass murder. Nor do we hope that, we hope nobody is a mass murderer that's watching us or listening to us. You know, if you are, seek help now. Uh, if you Comes if you have your local therapist, if you have local, regional, family myths, legends, anything like that that you'd like to share, send us an email to cup of coffee with scream at gmail dot com. I think this one has bothered youngest kid. He's over here bouncing his leg furiously. That's furiously because so you see the cam- the camera. It's called ADHD. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's left you speechless. Like it, it, that is truly scary. Like the fact that he was like that. That is truly scary. You mean truly frighten you even more? Sure. It's not that that being a sociopath is rare. It's just that the way that people do what they do. A lot of these people end up being in positions of power. Hmm. We can see this in our world today. Yeah, Why kill true. 25 to 200 when you can be in control and kill thousands? Yep. That's the true scary. That is really scary. Yeah. So, you all have a beautiful, blessed day. Know that you are loved. Thank you for sharing time and coffee with us Mm -hmm. and we'll see you on the next cup don't forget to like comment share and most of all subscribe bye 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 don't kill people